So this video is going to be the December 2022 edition of What Have I Been Writing With Lately. This is the video series in which I talk about the pens and pencils that I've been using lately. It's not a set of recommendations or reviews. These are just the pens and pencils that have been on my desk over the past month or so. Uh, let's hop right into it. Okay, so the first pen we'll be looking at is this. This is the Fisher Space Pen Capomatic. That's the model. And uh, it is called the Dark Cherry, that's the color, and the Cerakote, that's C-E-R-A-K-O-T-E. -E. And that is this new coating that Fisher is putting on some of their space pens and their uh, bullet pens, which is their smaller pen. Uh, and it's basically a ceramic-like, maybe it's even ceramic coating that is uh, supposed to be very tough. Obviously, it takes on color quite nicely and it has a really interesting texture. Uh, these are relatively new, maybe they came out three, four months ago, and I believe they're only available directly from Fisher at this point. Here, for reference, is a standard Capomatic. You see the stainless steel, chrome-plated upper, or nickel-plated, chrome-plated, whatever, plastic lower, and then here is that matte-finished Cerakote. Essentially the same pen, we see the coating is Different, slightly textured, has a sort of ceramic type finish to it. Seems quite tough. I've dropped the pen a few times. I haven't, you know, hit it with a hammer or anything like that, but it seems quite tough. Uh, we don't see any wear right here yet. Uh, maybe that'll come over time. It's a little bit hard to tell, but so far so good. And right now the main appeal to it is an interesting texture. And then, you know, the very cool dark cherry color. It's available in a... Uh, like a gray, I think, and then black, maybe a navy. I don't know, it's available in a couple of nice colors and the colors it picks up are clearly different than uh, what you'd see in the standard plastic and silver or the, you know, the brass coated, which I have right here. So expect to see some more videos about this one in the coming days, but it's very much a standard Capomatic. It uses the normal Fisher PR4 black pressurized refill so it's a very standard fisher space pen just in a new coating next up we have this pen this is a road drink 600 no surprise there it's a levenger model so it's an older model and uh, i use this pen all the time it's not that i'm trying to test this pen out specifically we've talked about it many many times on the channel but in here i have a Schneider Jellion 39 refill. So this is one of the better Parker style, if not the best Parker style. So that's the refill type that fits in this pen and it's a gel refill. So this is the Schneider Jellion, like gel ion or gel lion or something like that, 39. This is the older model. There's a new model called the Jellion Plus. And you'll see that this one is on the way out. And I've been using it largely to help or try to help better figure out why this full refill, the refill I really like, in fact, is not writing properly. Uh, so I've done a lot of comparison between the Jellion 39 and the Jellion Plus. And honestly, I was going to do a video about it, but the findings aren't that interesting. The Jellion Plus seems to be slightly better but not usually different than the 39. And then as I was, you know, doing my writing or whatever day-to-day -day testing and all that, this 39 started to wear out. So I've been sort of playing with it to see if there's a good way to revive it. I've done some videos and articles about that on unsharpen.com and reviving a gel pen is just, I would say just a constant struggle. And this refill is probably maybe a year and a half, two years old. Clearly I didn't use it a ton, but it's problematic and it's quite annoying. Anyway, I have a Jelly N39 around here somewhere. A 39 Plus, I've been using that a fair bit. Uh, I have that one in blue. It's a little bit better than this refill. Uh, but again, not hugely different from one to the next. So I've been using the Roaching 600 and the Jelly N39. Next up, this is a Lamy 2000. Uh, I did a quick video about uh, the pen refill I'm using with this, which is not a standard Lamy M16 ballpoint, which is the proprietary refill you would find in this. It is this, 
It appears to be unbranded, but it's actually a JMO refill. I did a full video about that. And after doing that video, I uh, kept on using the pen. Uh, the refill is a totally adequate, in fact, pretty good ballpoint. You know, it's not at the uh, jet stream level, but quite good. That's the JMO, J-A-Y-M-O, in a Lamy 2000 ballpoint, which is a nice pen. It's a pen I like, just like with the Lamy 2000, I, I use a lot and then I kind of get tired of and I use a lot. And what I get tired of is sort of this sloped, curvy end, which is just like, do I hold it here? Do I hold it here? Do I hold it here? Uh, sometimes I just, again, it just wears me out and I get tired of it. Other times I'm just very appreciative of this being a really wonderfully made pen, great design, uses that really nice fiberglass-like macrolon material. And now I have a refill in it I really like. I don't have a major problem with the Lamy M16, M16, that's their standard refill, but this JMO is a good deal better. So I've been enjoying that. And you can see it's a nice deep blue color, relatively smooth, just a good performing refill. So that's the Lamy 2000 ballpoint. Again, nothing, nothing too crazy. It's a pen we've talked about many times. I have a multiple of these pens. You could buy them. There's some really great deals. If you want to buy one of these used, you could buy one uh, for usually $25, $30, no problem, even though it's a much more expensive pen. Uh, and they hold up really nicely. This one you could see, uh, maybe we could pick it up here. So it says uh, Lamy, so you could really get in there. Lamy 2000 W Germany. So Lamy 2000 West Germany. So it's a pen from the, uh, what, the late 80s or early 90s. Next up, this is a bit of an oddity. So this is in Itoya, which is a Japanese pen company. The name of the pen is called the Paper Skater. And uh, it's one of those pens I picked up in a kind of a random pen bundle. I never had this pen new. I've never had it in mint condition. I've never even had this pen with the original refill in it. Uh, again, I just bought one of those pen bundles I talk about sometimes on this channel. And I kind of looked at it and I said, oh, the shape looks like I could probably get a, a Pilot G2 refill in there. Uh, I did. I had this uh, Pilot, or maybe this is an energy, we'll see. Yeah, so it's a Pentel, but I would call this to be a uh, you know Pilot style. And I got this one in it. So this is a Pentel uh, LR10. That's the... LR refill, that's the type of refill that Pentel uses and or the family of refill that Pentel uses in their gel pens. And the uh, 10 means it's a 1.0 millimeter. It fits in here quite nicely. You can see it's a, maybe it kind of stretches out this a little bit. It's a little bit of a kind of uh, flare there or bell shape. Uh, probably as I over tighten this. And you can see maybe it's a bit too long, but uh, whatever. And now I have... Uh, you know, this is not like a fancy pen. It's not super high quality. In fact, it's a little bit flimsy. The cap fits on fine. It has this kind of cool clip that I like. I guess it's leaking a little bit, whatever. Or maybe just getting some uh, ink from around here. Uh, the fact of the matter was I had an extra refill and I had this body, it felt right in. And now I have a pretty nice capped gel pen that is a really wet writer so this is the uh it's hard to even describe what this is this is an toya body with a uh enter lr 10 refill in it and again it's a really thick line a wet writer this is a uh for me this is a, a refill that is fun for just kind of jotting down notes really quickly scribbling stuff out and that sort of stuff. And it is, uh, I don't normally use purple ink. I happen to have one of these LR10 refills lying around. I'm not really sure why, probably a different pen bundle or had a Pentel Enerdo body. I wanted to use something else. And I was able to Frankenstein this together. And I have a, uh, you know, pretty solid capped gel pen. Clearly needs a little cleaning. I'm not sure what happened there. Next up, uh, again, this is almost the exact same circumstances as before, I was looking for a uh, very smooth, wet gel pen, and one of my go-tos is and has been for many, many years. This pen it is a Pilot G2 1.0 millimeter. I don't know what else there is to say at this, this point. If you want 
a really wet, really smooth fountain pen like gel pen, the Pilot G2 is just a great way to go. I know a lot of people have moved over to pens that I would consider to be better, you know, like the uh, Pentel Energel or Zebra Sarasa, but uh, this 1.0 G2 is still one of my favorites. I don't know if it's for nostalgia, nostalgia purposes or what, but I always do enjoy this pen. I like the refill, I like the click. Uh, they, you know, they don't last that long, but I tend to have a bunch of them lying around. And you can see this one is, you know, maybe 50% done, 60% done. If we do a quick comparison, you can see there's that LR10 refill here, there, and there's the Pilot G2, both 1.0 millimeter. Uh, I think the Pilot might put down a little bit more ink, but they're largely comparable. The Pentel refills are a little bit more reliable and they dry more quickly. But this is a Midori cotton paper. So very little smearing because it is so absorbent. One thing I will say about that Pilot G2 is when you get going quickly, you tend to outpace the ink and you just end up getting that loss of line there. When you go slowly, no problems. You go quickly and the ball just doesn't pick up ink as quickly as you'd like. You see it started off strong, but as you go back and forth, the ball doesn't have that much ink and you get that sort of uh, railroading down there. That's always been a problem with these pens. So they're not great at like kind of scribbling or crossing out, but if the lines are smaller and less regular, it's not really a problem. So you could write quickly with it, but if you want to go in a straight line for a long period of time, you'll see a degradation that gets even worse if you're going back and forth. It's just an interesting thing about these pens. Just a bit of a dated design. I guess next up is this. And again, almost the same thing. So I guess there is a bit of a theme here with these pens, not with the pen bodies, but with the type of pen, which is a Sharpie S gel, the all black version, which is my favorite. I think it's a good looking pen. In fact, if it didn't say Sharpie here and didn't have that S gel logo, it would be a great looking pen. Uh, and uh, this is also in that 1.0 millimeter, also in blue. This is a better pen for scribbling. You can see much more reliable and it doesn't lose the line as much. This is also quite wet, quite a white line, quite a fun pen to use. So this is the S gel in the 1.0 millimeter. I don't know if they call it the bold or the broad or whatever. This is the metal version. So it's a nice matte metal body, has a little bit of heft to it. It's a good deal heavier than this plastic pen, but very similar in dimensions. There's no way that the S gel could have ever existed if the Pilot G2 hadn't been such a hit for so long. The S gel in metal is sort of like an executive version of the Pilot, but the Pilot Premier or executive, whatever they call it, isn't as good a pen as the S gel, the Pilots. The G2s tend to get worse as they get more expensive, uh, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, I use these S gels a lot, mainly because they last for a long time. They don't tend to degrade as much as a lot of other gel pens I have, like that Schneider. Uh, I don't know why. <clears throat> and I've heard mixed reviews on them, but mine have been holding up well. And again, when you buy this pen, you're usually buying it in a 12 pack. So there tends just to be a lot of them lying around. So I've been using it a bit as a nice muted click that I really like and just an overall good looking pen. Last up is this. This looks just like that Cap-O-Matic before, but it is actually an Oto Raise, and this is a Jotter-like pen, which is something we'll be talking more about in the future. And it is uh, looks like a Jotter, and it has a Parker-style uh, G2 refill in it, but it is a gel refill. So this is called the Oto Raise. That's the pen, and the, it's the Oto Raise Flash Dry Gel Refill. It's a good-looking pen. Looks like a jotter. It's a little bit longer, a little bit skinnier. Has a lighter click, uh, and sometimes you could find these locally for really cheap. I think I bought this one for under four dollars online. It might be five or six dollars. It's a nice writing gel pen, and it has that needle tip refill. Uh, while the pen body is not my favorite, it's a little too skinny. I do like it a lot and I really like this refill. So in fact, I would generally take the Oto Rays flash dry 
over that Schneider Jellion. Uh, the Schneider Jellion G2, sorry, Schneider Jellion Plus improves on that enough that it's probably a, uh, you know, a toss-up for me where I would uh, probably take the Jellion over the flash dry. Not because I think the ink is better, but I tend to prefer a standard tip over the needle tip. But this is a very good performing needle tip and one of the better Parker style G2 gel refills. It's a mouthful. Uh, but overall, it's a good pen. I really like this pen and I do recommend it. I've been enjoying using it. I wasn't using it just for the sheer pleasure though. Uh, I have a, there's some videos coming up about Parker style pens or Parker jotter like pens. And this is clearly one of them. So uh, I think that pretty much sums it up for the pens and pencils that I've been using. Not really in pencils, actually. The pens that I've been using this month. Uh, again, there's been the gel, the thick gel pens. As I get towards the end of the year, I'm doing my note taking, crossing things out, whatever. And then your jotter like pens, a gel pen. I've been trying to figure out something new. And then, of course, a classic ballpoint. Uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Thanks for watching.